go, Petra. Come on, Petra. Good girl. Hi folks, I'm Seamus from Outdoors Inspiration and this is Petra, my German Shepherd. Tonight I'd love to deliver Outdoors Inspiration Outdoor Essentials, but I got a phone call from the producer saying we're doing dinner tonight and I needed to meet him on this tour. Um, so <laughs> that's absolutely fantastic. I'm hoping we're going to go to the, uh, the Indian curry house down in Tavistock. Uh, I quite like an Indian, I'm not sure what Petra's going to have. Anyway, it's getting a bit late and a bit dark. Not quite sure where he is. Hmm. I'll go and find out. Hello, Seamus. Yeah, where are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm on the tour now. Yeah. What do you mean, not a curry? Well, when you said dinner, I assumed we were going to go down the curry house. Dinner as in camping food, dried food, oh, wet foods, stoves. From a camper's perspective, wild camping, yeah? Okay, well, it was a bit disappointing, but um, I was looking forward to a tikka masala, but um, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, have an extra portion of pilo rice on me then while you're there. Okay, right, cheers. Bye now. Apparently, I've got the wrong end of the stick again. As much as I'd like to be noshing into me chicken tikka masala, I'm gonna talk about freeze-dried foods and, uh, and wet meals. Right, so, if that's the way it's gonna be, this is where we're set up for the night. First of all, the usual caveat. I'm just gonna talk about the things that I like doing in the places where I like going with the stuff that I've got. Other people will always have other views and opinions and uh, dietary requirements and tastes are certainly one of those areas where uh, there could be huge debate about what people prefer or don't prefer. So if you have a look through any of my videos, uh, you'll see that uh, I generally speaking use base camp foods to supply the, uh, the camping food that I use. Um, base camp foods are based in Derbyshire and I have no affiliation or sponsorship from uh, base camp foods. Before putting this video together, however, I did speak to Laura at Basecamp Foods because she's a really good source of information. I said, would you like to help with this particular project where I put a video together talking about the dietary needs of wild campers? And Laura was only too glad to help and she sent me some food. Uh, so I want to declare that, that the foods tonight we're going to look at have been supplied by Basecamp Foods. So one of the first products I'd like to talk about is um, Summit to Eat. Um, I like these, you'll see me eating a lot of these on the hill and uh, my favourite <laughs> thing that they provide is, uh, is my pudding, custard apple crunch. The Summit to Eat range is a good range of foods, uh, generally they've got something to suit my dietary needs. Uh, I'm not particularly fussy, uh, my wife's a vegan which means I pretty much eat anything including pork chops and bacon. But. <laughs> But I do like these uh, these products. Um, they're probably uh, at a reasonable budget range as well. I can't remember the price of them, but they're not the most expensive in the world. Um, and uh, they come as a freeze-dried food. Now, it's important at this point to distinguish between freeze-dried and dehydrated. Often people will refer to dehydrated foods because they're dried foods. You can lose a lot of flavour and a lot of nutrition by dehydrating foods and that's quite evident with some of the dehydrated products. Freeze-dried, on the other hand, is exactly what it says on the tin. It's frozen before it's gone through the drying process, and that retains probably 95% of the nutrition and flavour within the food. So when you rehydrate it, um, it certainly retains an awful lot of its flavour. So the next brand that's up is, uh, is Expedition Foods, and my favourite dinner is actually chicken korma with rice. It's really nice. It's not for dogs. It says it on the packet, Petra, not for dogs. Well, maybe a bit is later. Anyway, it's my absolute favorite. I love that. So Expedition Foods comes in at a slightly higher price point, um, but it's also a higher energy range. So the calorific value of these is higher, generally speaking, than the Summit to Eat Foods. So the NHS recommends that the average calorific intake for a man is 2,500 calories. And for a woman, 2,000 calories. 
but that hasn't taken into account a strenuous workload. So if you've been working out hard on the hills all day, you're probably going to need a few more calories. But to be honest, if you're out for an overnighter or two, does it really matter? I mean, yes, you want to keep your energy levels up, but at the end of the day, you want to enjoy your food, don't you? So on average, the um, expedition foods provide about 800 calories from one of these meals, okay? And from summit to eat, I think this is about 400 and, what is it, 460 calories per 100 grams, and there's 130 grams in there. Now, I haven't done the maths, but I'm going to estimate that's about 600 calories. So, more calorific input, less calorific input. So, preparing one of these meals is an absolute piece of cake. First of all, we open it up, we take out the oxygen absorber, you'll find a little blue plastic packet in there, make sure you take that out and throw it away. We then add a given amount of water to this. It could be 300 mils, 250 mils. Read the packet, read the instructions for the meal that you're having, fill it with boiling water, give it a good stir, and generally speaking, you leave it to stand for about 10 minutes before it's ready to eat. But read the instructions on the packet first because it will vary from meal to meal. So in terms of real tasty food and good quality food, Drytech, a Norwegian company, produce absolutely lovely freeze-dried meals. There are a number of different lines that they produce, one of which is the real Termat, um, and that is full of flavour. This particular one is reindeer stew, I'm looking forward to trying that, and uh, it's kind of aimed at your general punter, uh, because everything is marketed on the front of the packet. So these are actually prepared in a slightly different way. You notice that the, the packaging is a lot harder and that's because they're vacuum packed. And because they're vacuum packed, the shelf life is, generally speaking, longer, five to seven years on these. Um, and they hold in the nutrition and flavour a whole lot better. So they're quite a tasty brand uh, and worthwhile the extra couple of quid uh, than you would over some of the more budget brands that you can find in the retail stores around you. Another line that Drytech produce is the real field meal. Generally speaking, the field meals are less retail friendly. You can't detect from the front of the packet what's in it. You've got to read the small print on the back. So in this particular case, it's muesli with berries, um, but I've got to go hunting to find that. But the field meals will, generally speaking, be more expedition-based, and they will have higher calorific value than the real termat. So there is a choice to be had between the two types. One other product that they come up with with Drytech is the Arctic Field Ration. Now this is like a whole kind of different ball game. There's 1,300 calories in this little beauty. And when I open this up in here, there'll be a main meal, chewing gum, coffee, and even a little bag to put my litter in. Let's have a little look at our Arctic Field Ration. It's simple enough to open. Just find a corner and peel it back. Beef snacks like beef jerky, this is chilli and garlic. A caramel energy bar. Some spicy sauce, I quite like the idea of that. That's a disinfectant wipe. And a couple of little, in fact three little briquettes of, uh, of chewing gum in there. Probably to freshen up afterwards. And freeze dried instant coffee, Colombian, oh nice. This is the field meal, um, and on this occasion, I, like I said with field meals, I can't tell what this is because it's not as retail friendly, it's meant for expeditionary stuff, but it's quite available to anybody to order. Um, this particular one is kebab stew, uh, and it tells me that on the front of the pack here as well. And the calorific value on this one is down here at 700 calories. So that's quite a high calorific intake uh, from one meal spoon to eat it with, some peanuts, an energy drink, Now the energy drink you have to add obviously water to, um, so that's a, a ready to mix energy drink, and then a waste bag to responsibly dispose of and take away all of your waste with you. So as far as any meal deal goes, that's pretty good isn't it? So good quality ingredients are at the base of Lyo Expedition Foods. They focus on natural ingredients which are preservative and additive free. Well, that's a real unique selling point for this particular brand. Now here we've got 
<laughs> apple crumble, my favourite. Um, and it's clearly marked on this occasion as vegetarian. We've got five spiced chicken and that is clearly marked as lactose free. And we've got coconut porridge for breakfast and that is vegan, gluten free and lactose free. So by a quick check on the website, you should be able to see whether any of these particular foods meet your dietary requirements. And without trying to over exaggerate Basecamp Foods uh, customer service, which is very, very good, you can actually apply filters on there if you order online for your dietary requirements. So if you're vegan, for example, it will give you the vegan appropriate meals as a selection. I'll put a link in the description below to Basecamp Foods in Derbyshire. Have a peek there. So putting these on the scales before I came out, we're in the ballpark of about 300 grams. Packaged like this, I've got about 1100 calories ready to go with breakfast, evening meal and a dessert and it's going to take up very little pack space at all which is something that's always worthwhile bearing in mind how much space is this going to take in my rucksack and uh, for me this is absolutely minimal for what it's providing so that's a good selection of freeze-dried meals the dry tech foods come vacuum packed the other ones will all have oxygen absorbers don't forget in the packet and they're prepared in the same way open up the packet take out the oxygen absorber add the required amount of boiling water stir and leave to stand before eating and now i'm going to talk about our old favorite the wayfarers there will be a weight penalty because these are wet meals. They're ready to eat. You can eat this straight from the packet cold, but the weight penalty is that you're carrying that moisture with you in the packet. So here we have breakfast, an evening meal, and a pudding. If we just go through these, uh, what's that doing in there? Burns real food for dogs? Who put that in there? I normally say it's not for dogs. You can see it on the packet <laughs> on this occasion. It is for dogs. Right, you can have that later for your supper. You can't get the staff, can you? Some kind of assistant you are. Right, where were we? So these again are about 1100 calories for all three. I put them on the scales tonight and this is over 800 grams. So the package between the Lyo freeze-dried meals and the Wayfarer meals, as an example, is a difference of half a kilogram. You don't have to be a professor in mathematics to work out that two days worth of food is going to cost you an extra kilogram in weight to pack. The bulk from these as well takes up a little bit more space. But where these win every time is that they can just be eaten cold straight from the packet. Not only that, but with these it's very simple. Put it into a pan of boiling water, bring it to the boil, let it simmer, uh, and they are ready to eat. With a pan this size, you can get a number of meals in there. So, um, I mentioned that these are less dependent on water. Obviously, you've got to squidge them up and put them in boiling water. Uh, try and make sure you keep your packets clean before you do that, because you can then use that boiling water to make your brew with. I'm sure that technicality isn't lost on any of you, and that's what you do anyway. However, there is another water-saving way of doing that, and that's just by using 80 mils of water in a hot pack. I don't often use these, and in fact, I haven't used one of these for a couple of years. So let's have a go tonight. We'll stick in the all-day breakfast and, um, See how it turns out. So I want to add the meal on top of the heater pad in here and the meal is unopened. We're now going to fill up with water to this line here which is about 80 mils. comes with a little sticky pad and with the heater pad at the bottom I'm just going to put this inside an envelope homemade with a little bit of reflective foil just to keep that warm and we're going to leave that for about 12 minutes and whilst that's cooking it gives me an ideal opportunity to mention our fantastic giveaway on this channel I'll put a link in the description below for the giveaway that we're currently running. It's a free draw for subscribers to enter. There's got to be one lucky winner and the prize is a remote canister stove with a preheat tube to set you up for your wild camping catering for this winter. Now when this meal's finished cooking, I'm going to enjoy it. 
it's an all-day breakfast and I don't normally have a cooked breakfast to be honest with you so I buy some of these food safe foil bags and I just open up and I preload with about 80 grams of porridge oats in there and a little bit of brown sugar and that forms my breakfast I just add some boiling water to that in the morning and I've got my porridge just the same as I have it and just the same as I like it whether I be at home on holiday in a hotel at a friend's house that's all I ever have for my breakfast so now for the moment of truth let's see how that heat pack has fared with my Wayfarer all day breakfast mmm that's really really worked um, I'm touched, there's little bits of sausage and things like that in here. And, mm, they're hot all the way through. I was expecting to see steam and stuff coming out of this, and um, there wasn't, but actually the food is, um, is very hot. Mm, that's definitely worked. <laughs> Are you ready to go then, Petra? So when I returned from recording this video, I found a package and a note on my doorstep. The note's from the producer. Dear Seamus, sorry you missed out on a top-notch bit of curry last night down in Tavistock, blah, 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 blah. Here's a little something, thinking of you, and he left me this. Which I'm delighted with, obviously. Chicken tikka masala. <laughs> it's lunchtime. Be rude not to really wouldn't it <laughs> let's give it a go So on a rainy day like today, in the middle of the dartboard, chicken tikka masala with rice, well, that's got to be nice. And uh, you know what I'm going to say, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, that is absolutely delicious, absolutely packed full of flavour, and it is what it says it is on the packet, wholesome, nutritious, uh, and very, very tasty. And there might even be a little bit left for wet dogs in the rain, eh Petra?